this uh, this test match, which has uh, ended in a draw with England 100 and, what 103 runs short of their target that was set them at lunchtime of uh, 273 from 75 overs. There'll be lots of debate, I'm sure, about uh, England's uh, reluctance, shall we say, to uh, attempt that target. And uh, we'll uh, be hearing from England's captain uh, in a second. You'll hear some noise. I'm walking around in front of the mound stand. Uh, but anyway, there was uh, certainly runs for, for Dom Sibley, who finished 60 not out. Uh, Ollie Pope was 20 not out and Joe Root uh, at least made 40. But uh, the match was drawn, England finishing on 170 for three from, from 70 overs. Uh, Michael Vaughan, uh, I think, is in position now to, uh, to uh, run us through... Uh, a review of this game. But what, what, what's your take on what happened here this afternoon, Michael? Yeah, I think it was disappointing. I, I, I thought it was a real opportunity for the England side to show a bit more intent. Um, you know, I think the declaration did surprise us all by Kane Williamson at lunchtime. He, he, he wanted to have a go for it. Um, yeah, just a, a little bit busier. I'd, I'd, I'd like to have seen the England team. I completely understood the start. You know, you try and see off that new ball, the 15 overs. They did that, Burns and Sibley. I always felt that was going to be the real danger period. Um, from then on, I'd like to have just seen just just an up. I'm not saying go to sixth, fifth, and sixth gear, but just a little bit busier, just to see if they could have got themselves in a position to uh, have a dip uh, in, in the in the final session. I think it tells us a little bit about the, the kind of mentality uh, in the England side that the, they've got a very inexperienced batting lineup, and I think Joe Root and the coach Chris Silver has erred on the side of making sure that they didn't lose to potentially, um, you know give these younger players even less confidence going into Edge Baston in a few days' time. They've opted for the draw. Uh, they, they had to graft, graft and, and work hard for that draw. So they've, they've opted for that to make sure that they go to Birmingham uh, nil all um, with a chance of winning the series still. So uh, disappointing for, for many of the fans in the ground. You know, when you've got crowd back for the first time, you have an opportunity. You've got to remember the interview that Joe Root, the captain, gave you, Aggers. It was a, a very positive one just a few days ago. He said, we want to win all seven test matches. Well, the first time of asking, an opportunity was thrown his side's way and they decided to, to take the, um, the, I won't call it negative, but they decided to, 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 to take the, the, the defensive kind of approach to make sure that they go, didn't go 1 0 down in the series rather than think, wait a minute, we can go 1 0 up in the series and have a great spectacle here at Lords. Just going to interrupt you because uh, Joe Root is standing in front of me. Joe, uh, there were some disappointed listeners, I'll be honest, uh, about that this afternoon. How, how do you explain. Uh, I don't know, not, no obvious attempt, at least, to at least attempt the target. Well, I think if you look at the conditions, you look at the surface, it was very challenging. Um, it was slow, it was hard to time the ball, and it was hard to sort of get any, I mean, any sort of rhythm when you were batting out there. Um, and, of course, yes, you look at the target and, and the amount of overs that we did have, but it, it wasn't quite as straightforward as that. Having batted on that wicket first innings, knowing that, more time had gone into it it was always going to be quite difficult initially we, we set out to have a, a quite an open mind see see where we got to after a, a, um, you know after a 15 20 over period and it got to the stage where it was it didn't feel like it was quite possible to to take that on um it's, of course will disappoint quite a few people but from our point of view we're very much in this series um I think credit to new zealand they've probably played the majority of this cr of the cricket throughout this game um, and you know we we leave here level, uh, and we give ourselves a great chance to win the series, Edge Baston. Yeah, that's when I spoke to you before the game. You said that you would really wanted to win all seven Test matches this year, and it doesn't really seem as if that was attempted there. Well, we we didn't attempt to win it towards the back end of it. I mean, for as long as we could, when we started the day with the ball in particular, we were trying to hold the game, make that decision as difficult as possible for New Zealand, um, try and leave it so that we you know we had a, an opportunity to to chase something down and unfortunately that didn't quite materialise felt that uh, in the grand scheme of things winning the series is was bigger than potentially giving them a 1-0 one 1-0 one lead going into the second game so that's how that's how we saw it from our perspective and as I say the series is very much alive and we've got an opportunity to win it there Yeah. Will you look back on it I don't know, tomorrow or the next day and you know, reflect on what happened this afternoon a bit I mean, will yeah, the team I, learn I think, from it I think we'll learn a lot from this game uh, and I think you know, from a batting point of view you look at some of the dismissals in the first innings we spoke quite honestly and brutally after that first innings and talked about being a little bit more disciplined and I think one thing that we can definitely say that we did do in the se second time round was be more disciplined we were harder to get out we made a lot dif more difficult for them to um, to break us down as a batting group and, and now that should hold us in good stead for the rest of the summer and for the next game 
runs for Rory Burns at, at least, and he'll, he'll be delighted he's got his his third hundred. Yeah, he played brilliantly. You know, I think as I say, it was d- tricky conditions throughout the whole game. You know, he had some difficult deliveries to manage over the course of his two innings, but the way he held things together for us and, and really kept us in this Test match was an outstanding piece of batsmanship. So, um, you know, credit to him. He was um, to be come back into the team after missing out in India shows a real strength of character. We we know that that's probably his his biggest strength as a player. His um, you know, mental approach to batting and mental approach to the game and he showed that in abundance today. Yeah. I mean, some of those players who did fail were given a great example by, by Devon Conway of, 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 of batting in, in test cricket. Yeah, and he played beautifully. For, you would never have known that that was his... Uh, you'd never known that that was his first innings in test cricket. It was, uh, it was a very, very good innings, uh, very difficult to get out. We asked a lot of good questions of him and he had some very good answers. So we'll have to have a look at a few plans going into the next game. You've got to go, I know. I've got to ask you one question about Ollie Robinson, though. Captain of the side, I mean, he bowled really well and, and batted well, but the off-field stuff, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, it's not acceptable within our game. You know, Ollie's made a huge mistake. Um, he knows that. He fronted up to the dressing room and to the, to the rest of the world um, straight away after day one, and he's, he's very remorseful. And I think it's a lesson for everyone in the game. It, more has to be done, more... You know that, that continued education and learning about how we can, how to you know, behave in society and, and within our sport needs to needs to carry forward. We've we've started doing a lot of good work in and around the cricket as as a team, and we'll continue to do that. We want to make the game as inclusive and as diverse as we possibly can, um, and we'll continue to keep looking at finding ways to to make that possible. Thank you, Joe. Cheers, Thanks for Jackie, talking thank to you. us. Uh, we'll see you at Edgebaston. There we go. Um, so that was... What, Michael, what did you make of uh, what uh, Joe Root had to say there? Yeah, I thought he, he spoke really well. I mean, um, you know, I question whether they did have an intent um, from that 15th over. I'm not too sure there was ever a, an intent from the, the batting unit this afternoon. You know, I, I understand it's, uh, you know, it's a two-match series, and I think England thought, and Joe thought, you know, he, he didn't want to offer the opportunity to... New Zealand by playing so riskily. Uh, my issue is that the situation of, of, of play with this batting unit, um, I'm not too sure they read the situation. In the first innings, there was too many expansive strokes uh, when the ball was swinging around. Um, that was the kind of innings that you would like to have seen um, with, with the ball leaving and going through to the keeper. Today was an, an innings where you thought, come on, just be a bit busy and you can play a few drives, and, and they didn't do so. So... Um, situations and playing the situation and reading the game I think needs to improve they're young and they're just starting out in their test match career so I'm sure Graham Thorpe Paul Collingwood Chris Silverwood Joe himself will sit down with the batters and go through dismissals mindset of what you know they were thinking at the times of dismissal and, and the situation of, and the right way to play um, so it's a learning curve but uh, you know I, I, I think sometimes we sit up here I can say oh go and go for it but it was really a genuine chance today and I think there wasn't many in the ground and many up here that would have been um, too cr- critical of England would have just had a bit more of a focus of being a bit busier and a bit more aggressive and, and a bit of failed. I, I don't think they'd have got criticised for doing so. But you know, Joe Root's never lost a Test series in the UK as a, as a captain, and um, you know, he, I think he just wants to make sure he's got that opportunity to uh, potentially win the series uh, at Edge Baston starting on Thursday. And he didn't want to risk too much today. Yeah, I, I guess I'm thinking particularly of the opening batsman. I mean, Dom Sibby does that, That's just the way he plays, isn't it? I and mean, there yeah. is there isn't another gear to go to. And I just wonder. You know, if you think you know, in, a, in a similar situation in an Ashes match or something, whether there is you know, th- th- there is that a- a- ability, perhaps, to actually be able to push things along, and if you do actually have to in a really important game uh, to get that sort of positive start, the impetus to the, to the beginning of an innings that you that you might need further down the line. Yeah, well, I, I don't think they, they have the, the style of players at the top of the order that could do that. You know, I think they've got players and they, they've decided to go with players that are more um, in the attritional way, uh, where the opposing team down back for long periods of time. I, I don't think, you know, I think Rory Burns, he showed when he got, got his 100, he, he, I think he's got a couple of gears that he could go up to. Um, Dom Sibley, I don't think he has. I think he just plays the way that he does. He's going to bat for a long period of time. He's going to be frustrating. Um, it's, I don't think you'll rush from the bar, I guess, to watch him, but... <laughs> Um, if he bats long periods of time and he wears the opposing bowlers down, particularly in a five-match series, well, he could be very, very valuable, but he's going to have to do so because he will put um, the batting unit under pressure to score a bit quicker, uh, You know, particularly when you get down to likes of 50 overs to 80 overs in Australia where you have to capitalise. You have to have players that can make hay when the sun shines, when the ball's doing nothing. 
Um, yeah, he's going to have to bat lots of time. He's going to have to um, try and wear down the opposing bowlers. If he does so over a five-match series, um, you guess he's worth his uh, weight in salt. But I do think he's going to put the batting unit under a lot of pressure batting the way that he does. I can see the nets at Edgebaston being inhabited by Messrs Crawley, uh, Lawrence, <laughs> Bra- Bracey. Yeah, a bit of an anxious wait for them, aren't they? Because they, yeah. they all missed out. Well, they'll play, um, so they've got another opportunity to to show their their, their value. Um, I think if you'd have said to Dan Lawrence and James Bracey a few days ago, right, you're not going to have to face the music and walk out there on a pair, well, I think they'd have grabbed your hand off. Uh, they've not had to face that, that pair. Um, but, you know, it's a learning curve for, for particularly someone like Dan Lawrence. He's played a few games now, so he knows Test cricket. Um, he's not played in the UK other than this inning, so we have to give him a little bit of a, a chance to get used to conditions. But he's quite loose. And in English conditions, when there's a little bit there, particularly when you're facing the likes of Southie, Jameson, Wagner, maybe Bolt on Thursday at Trent Bridge, he'll have to tighten up. Uh, Bracey, we've only seen him once, so we'll, we'll, we'll wait and uh, for our judgment on him once we've seen him again in Test match cricket. Um, it should be a good pitch. That's all I say. Edgebaston is generally a good pitch. It's, it, 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 it does favour uh, players that can uh, just hang around. You saw you know, Rory Burns get a, an Ashes centre there a couple of years ago, similar to the one that he got here. It's not the kind of ground that you can go and be a, a flash Harry and, and play shots from ball one. It does generally reward good test match batting. So uh, that'll be the message I'm so, sure from Graham Thorpe, Paul Collingwood and co, Chris Silwood. You're going to have to work hard for your runs, particularly against the New Zealand side. They're very, very good. They're a high-class test match unit, so it won't be uh, easy for the England uh, inexperienced batters. Michael, I've got Kane Williamson staring at me. Uh, well, great declaration. Everyone was, was really looking forward to a lively afternoon there, or rather fizzled out. Yeah, we were also looking forward to that. Um, we certainly thought there might have been a few more uh, sort of inconsistencies out of the surface. And, you know, the ball, um, it definitely went a little bit soft, so it, it made it, I suppose, a little bit more docile. Um, I think a harder ball on that surface, you know, would have created a, a few more problems. And um, we saw glimpses, but we didn't see it regularly enough. And it just, yeah, it just became, yeah, like you said, fizzled out a bit. And, um, yeah, which was a shame. It, it, Obviously losing a, a day to rain, um, you know, I'm sure, like I said, both teams, um, you know, would have probably done a bit better with that extra day and um, pushing that game a little bit further. But, um, yeah, all in all, I think both teams pushed hard for a result, just wasn't meant to be. I think England did. I, I, was, I was meaning, I was pointing a finger more at England for it fizzling out rather than you. You, oh. you, 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 you you've, you've tried everything. Yeah, I mean, like it's one of those things, I guess, uh, on that surface, uh, it did seem to be challenging to score quickly for for the most part I mean throughout the whole match it was quite challenging to, to score quickly but the surface offered as well it was a, it was a really good cricket wicket and um, we saw it deteriorate a bit um, so we were relying on that and, and no doubt you know the England camp would have wanted to get a, a really strong base to, to have a good crack to, to chase it and, and it's always a, a, I guess a fine balance you know when, when you're chasing on the last day in a test match so um, yeah, I mean, you might better off to ask Joe, but... I've but, asked yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure it crossed their mind um, yeah. throughout that chase, but, yeah, we were worrying about what we were trying to do. Yeah, well, I mean, in, in modern cricket terms, it was a very generous declaration. I mean, did you always have that sort of figure in mind or, or was it the early lunch and, and so on all, all, all yeah, part of that calculation? Yeah, uh, in and around-ish there-ish. Yeah. yeah, no, I guess you never have the, the perfect situation and then there was a bit of weather and and we thought um, declaring at lunch gave us, you know, an extra couple of overs and... Um, and we'll see how we go and, and we saw throughout the game that it did offer um, to the seam bowlers in particular um, and we thought with a hard ball on that wicket things could happen quite quickly but they didn't <laughs> and, uh, and here we are yeah. but um, yeah obviously losing a day to rain didn't help that cause either Devin Conway new fellow on the block Tim Southey yeah, been around a bit doesn't feel like the new fellow no, on the indeed. block that's for sure he didn't play she, like it either she's an absolute class yeah. act and he, you know he walked into the side and he just continued what he's been doing for so long and um, the comfort and how he went about his business and you know any time you, you can achieve a score like that special but in your first game for for your country and, and at the home of cricket uh, obviously something to, to remember and, and I'm sure many more to come yeah this last one have you enjoyed being back enjoyed being back at Lords yeah it's great um, it's always special you know you don't get too many opportunities to be here so um, you know you do have to to um, appreciate that, it's a little bit unique with the, the some of the COVID restrictions and yeah. eating lunch in, in different rooms. Um, but, yeah, I mean, at the same time, there's so many guys in that dressing room that have never um, had the chance to play here. So um, it is a very special place. See you at Birmingham. Thank you, Kane, Cheers, for talking to us. There we go. Kane Williamson, New Zealand's 
captain. We've got uh, another few minutes. Uh, I don't think we're going to see anyone else to interview down here. Um, so uh, just some thoughts, Michael, of, uh, of, of what you uh, heard there. Oh, he's a class act. You know, he's a, I mean, he hasn't got the runs this week, um, but he's a class act. He's a tremendous uh, leader of the New Zealand side, uh, so humble. Um, you know, I think in Devon Conway they found a real player. Uh, we saw that straight away. We've seen it in white ball cricket, but to find a player like that at uh, first time of asking uh, and, and an opening player, which they so desperately needed, uh, he'll be delighted with that, Kane Williamson. Look, Edge Baston, we know England are, are powerful there. I know the Aussies beat England there a, f- a couple of years ago, but historically England have had great success there. And I think maybe that was in the back of uh, Joe Root's mind today. Off and nothing today, go and win the series at Edge Baston. And I do think if England can win at Edge Baston, we'll look back at today and go, you know, what, the, the, they may have got it right, not offering too much to this New Zealand side who are very good. And they've had the better of the week. Um, but I do think they'll take some beat in New Zealand. Um, England are ex- inexperienced. Let's see. You know how they go about selection. Um, you know, I'm sure Ollie Robinson may miss out. Uh, will they rest one of Broad and Anderson? Uh, will Ollie Stone come in for Mark Wood? We'll have to wait. Will Jack Leach get a go? We'll have to wait and see. But um, England will have to play a lot better to beat this New Zealand side because uh, they're, they're high class. They're pretty much got, every, apart from the spin, uh, they've got every single aspect covered. Jeremy, you've been listening to uh, the two captains there as well. Has anything enlightened you? No, not really. Um, I mean, obviously, Kane Williamson isn't prepared to, to, to criticise in any way the English attempt, and it's not for his place to do that. So that's fine. I mean, uh, I, I didn't actually hear Joe say ha- what, you know, about his response about how they batted today. So I can't really comment on that, Aggers. Um, but look, New Zealand got some things out of the game, as I'm sure England did. Yeah, they, well, New Zealand did. I mean, as we heard Kane Williamson talking there about uh, about Devon Conway for a for, for a start. Oh, well, what, fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, solid defence. Try and get past that. If you pitch up a little bit too far, he's he, he, he's good driver of the ball. Uh, he had a couple of uncomfortable moments with with Mark Wood's pace and the perhaps the the lack of pace in the pitch. But he was then he decided, you know, that's where you see the strength of some sometimes the strength of mind that someone like Devon Conway does have. And I, I, I noticed some of the older players actually, Williamson himself and also Taylor sitting beside Devon Conway up there on the pavilion, up up there in the in the changing shed and sort of listening to what he had to say. They've got things to learn as well from even from this guy. And I mean, he's nearly 30 now, and we forget that he's had a hundred first-class games as well, and he's yes. played some tough cricket in South Africa. Yes, uh, and and Michael, what what have England got to do? I mean, is it a mindset, a mindset thing? Uh, you know, they, they, he, he, I did ask Joe Root, and he said, look, you know, they, they will reflect on what's happened mm. uh, this afternoon, go away and have another look at it. I wonder if it, you know, it, it, well, it's, it's difficult to see them beating Australia with a mindset like that. Yeah, I mean, the positive thing, Roy Burns was was excellent. He needed that score. Um, obviously, Ollie Robinson. I thought he just looked every bit a Test match cricketer. Um, you know, it's the batting, you know, and it's going to be the talk of the summer for me is how England try and get a batting. You know, Ben Stokes will come back in, Butler will come back in, but it has been a problem of them getting big, big scores against high quality bowling for a period now. Um, and that is going to be the challenge for this England side. Can they get enough runs against India first and foremost? And can they give themselves that belief and confidence and gather partnerships amongst the batting unit to get to Australia in November time to get big, big scores because they're going to need them. Uh, as we speak, the one thing that I will say is that slightly concerned is these younger players that have played you know, 10 and 20 games, they don't seem to be getting much better. And that's a concern. I think in Test Match Cricket, you're looking for your first 10 games, you get, you know, you, you get all the time in the world really for those 10 games because you can make mistakes and you can have one or two aspects of your technique question, but then you've got to improve and you've got to get better because quality bowlers, which there are some quality bowling units around the world now, you know, they will expose either your mental frailties or your technical frailties. Uh, and just one or two of the England players now, having played a bit of cricket, just need to get that little bit better. And Jeremy, I mean, options for New Zealand. It seems as if Kane Williamson was giving his well, a number of fast bowlers there a lot of overs, possibly with a view to giving others a go in the next game. Looks like Southie, he was brilliant here, wasn't he? Um, he might get a rest, I would think, and maybe Bolt coming in for him. And it, I know it, it breaks up that sort of Southie-Bolt 
partnership that they've always had, but that's okay. Jameson, I would think, would continue. Uh, and and then you've got, obviously, Wagner. Wagner, I got a bit concerned about to Aggers because of the, the slow nature of the pitch that he couldn't really reference his method, which is a coming from a different area of the pitch. That short pitch bowling that he's found so successful wasn't getting up high enough, and so he had to then resort to pitching up. And it didn't work in the first uh, innings, but today he got it to swing. So he, that's going to be an interesting one. And could there be a change in the spinner, Ajaz Patel coming in for Santner?